Here is a number chart that goes up in fives. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. The chart continues in the same way. One of the numbers below will be at the start of a row on the chart. Circle the number. Now what we need to spot here is that when we go down the columns, we add 25 each time. So 5 plus 25 is 30, 30 plus 25 is 55, and so on. Now we know multiples of 25, we have 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, and so on. And what we need to spot is that numbers at the start of a row are always 5 more than a multiple of 25. So 5 is 5 more than 0, 30 is 5 more than 25, 55 is 5 more than 50, 80 is 5 more than 75, 105, 5 more than 100. So we're looking for the number that is 5 more than a multiple of 25. So that's 455, because we know if a number ends 5, 0, that it's a multiple of 25. So 450 is a multiple of 25. 455 is 5 more. So we know that if the pattern continues, 455 will be at the start of a row. Now, one of the numbers below will be at the end of a row on the chart. Circle the number. So if we look at the end of each row, we have 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. So we just have our 25 times table. So we're looking for a number that's a multiple of 25. So that's 375. Because if a number ends 75, then we know that it must be a multiple of 25. Here are six quadrilaterals with their mathematical names. Laura chooses one of the quadrilaterals. She says, it has two acute angles. All four sides are the same length. Which quadrilateral did Laura choose? So remember, a quadrilateral is a four-sided shape because quad means four. Now, if we look at the square, we can see that all four sides are the same length. But Lara can't have chosen the square because she chose a shape which has two acute angles. And the angles in a square are right angles. Remember, an acute angle is less than a right angle. So if we look at the parallelogram, we can see that we have two acute angles. One here in the bottom left and one here in the top right, and then we have two obtuse angles as well. But Laura can't have chosen the parallelogram, because we know that she chose a shape where all four sides are the same length, and we can see two shorter sides and two longer sides. So let's look at the rhombus. With a rhombus, all four sides are the same length. And we have two acute angles. We have two angles that are less than a right angle. So because we have four sides of the same length and two angles which are acute, we know that Laura must have chosen the rhombus. Stefan chooses one of the quadrilaterals. He says, it has more than one obtuse angle. It has no parallel sides. Which quadrilateral did Stefan choose? Well, if we look at the kite, we can see that it has three obtuse angles, so that's more than one obtuse angle, and it has no parallel sides, so Stefan must have chosen the kite. Remember, parallel sides are sides or lines that would go on forever without crossing if they were extended. So if we look at the trapezium, though it has more than one obtuse angle, it has a pair of parallel sides, because these lines 
if we extended them, would go on forever and never cross. So Stefan must have chosen the kite. Jody has some triangular tiles. He uses two of these tiles to make different shapes. So we can see that he's using tiles with lengths of 5, 4 and 3 centimetres. So let's look at this shape first. We need to work out what the perimeter of the rectangle is. So remember, the perimeter of a shape is the distance around the outside. So we know that this length must be 4 because that's the height of a triangle and this length on the other side must be 4 as well. Then we can see that up here we have this length, so that's 3, that's the length of the base of the triangle and 3 on the other side as well. So to work out the perimeter we need to work out 4 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3 and that gives us 14. So the perimeter of this rectangle is 14 centimetres. Now let's look at this shape here. What is the perimeter of the isosceles triangle? Well we can see that we have 5 and 5 because this is the longest side of the triangle. Then we have 3 and 3. So altogether 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 3 is 16. So the perimeter of the isosceles triangle is 16 centimetres. And this triangle is isosceles because it has two sides of the same length and two angles which are of the same size. Now finally, we have this shape here. What is the perimeter of the quadrilateral? Well, we can see that this is the longest side of the triangle, so that's 5. Here we have 5 as well, here we have 3 because that's the shortest side, and here we have 4. But the perimeter is the length around the outside, so we need to work out what this length is here. Now we could just take a guess, but we don't need to do that, we can work it out. We know that this is the base of the triangle, so that's 3 centimetres, and we know that this is the height of the triangle, so that's 4. So then, this bit here must be the difference between 4 and 3. So this length here must be 1 centimeter. So now, 5 plus 1 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 comes to 18 centimeters. Draw two more straight lines to make a rectangle. So we can imagine that this point here and this point here will be two of the corners of the rectangle. And to get from this point to this point, we can go across one and up two. So now, if we take this point here and go across one and up two, we can see that the other vertex, the other corner of our rectangle will be here. So then all we need to do is join up our corners. And we have a rectangle because we have four right angles and opposite sides are the same length. Or what we could do is just turn our page and I find this easier because then it's much easier to see how the rectangle will be formed. Here are six digit cards. So we have the digits two to seven. Use all six digit cards to make three multiples of three. So first, if we take the two, then 23 is not a multiple of three because 23 is not in the three times table. But if we use the four, 24 is a multiple of three because eight times three is 24 or 24 divided by three is eight, so is a whole number. So we can cross off 2 and 4. Now if we use the 3 as our tens digit, then 35 is not in the 3 times table. But if we use the 6 as our ones digit, 36 is a multiple of 3 because 36 is in the 3 times table. 12 times 3 is 36. 
so we can cross off 3 and 6. And that leaves us with a 5 and a 7. So let's check whether 57 is a multiple of 3. Now we don't know our 3 times table up to 57, so to see if it's a multiple, what we can do is divide, and then if we get a whole number, so if we don't get a remainder, then we know that it's a multiple. So 5 divided by 3, 1 remainder 2, 27 divided by 3 is 9, and we don't have a remainder, so we know that 57 is a multiple of 3. Now, what we can do, and this is interesting about multiples of 3, is that if you switch the digits around, you still have a multiple of 3. So these answers are correct as well. So we can have 24 or 42, 36 or 63, 57 or 75. But there is another possible solution as well. We could have 27 as a multiple of 3, because 9 times 3 is 27. We could have 36, and we could have 45. These are all multiples of 3, because when we divide them by 3, we don't get a remainder. And again, we could switch the digits around, so we could have 72, 63, and 54 as well. Write these in order of size, starting with the smallest. So we have 3 quarters, 0 0.34, 0 0.7, and 43%. So we have a fraction, two decimals, and a percentage. Now we know how to convert between fractions, decimals, and percentages, and if we need to compare them, it's useful to make them all either all fractions all percentages, or what I prefer to do is change them all to decimals. So let's work out what 3 quarters is as a decimal. Now to do that, we need to remember that the first digit after the decimal point tells us how many tenths we have, and then the second digit how many hundredths. So we need to find an equivalent fraction to 3 quarters with a denominator of 10 or 100, but 10 isn't in the 4 times table, so we need to use 100. 4 times 25 is 100, and what we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator as well, and 3 times 25 is 75. So because we know 3 quarters is the same as 75 hundredths, we can write that as the decimal 0 0.75 because the second digit after the decimal point tells us how many hundredths we have. Then we have 0 0.34, so that's already a decimal, 0 0.7, and though that's already a decimal, to make it easier to compare, what I like to do is put a zero on the end, so that numbers we're comparing have the same number of decimal places, so have two digits after the decimal point. And we can do that because 0 0.70 is the same as 0 0.7. So we haven't changed the number because all this 0 tells us is that we don't have any hundredths, but 0 0.7 tells us that as well because 0 0.7 means we just have 7 tenths. Now 43%. So percentages are fractions over 100, so 43% is 0 0.43. So now we have 0 0.75, 0 0.34, 0 0.70, and 0 0.43. So we can see that 0 0.34 will be smallest, then 43%, because that's the same as 0 0.43. Then we have 0 0.7, and our largest number is 3 quarters, because that's equivalent to 0 0.75. Sarah, Amy, and Liam stand on some weighing scales two at a time. Here are the measurements. Sarah and Amy, 70 kilograms. Sarah and Liam, 80 kilograms. Liam and Amy, 80 kilograms. 
How much does Liam weigh? Well, what we need to spot here is that Liam must be 10 kilograms heavier than Amy. That's because Sarah's weight will of course be the same whether she's on the scales with Amy or with Liam, but 80 is 10 more than 70, so we know that Liam must weigh 10 kilograms more than Amy. Now we also know that Liam and Amy together weigh 80 kilograms. So what we can do is draw a bar model. So we have Liam and Amy, and altogether they weigh 80 kilograms. But we know that Liam is 10 kilograms heavier than Amy. So these two bars will be the same size, but then we have this 10 here to remind us that Liam is 10 kilograms heavier. So we know that these three bars have to add up to 80. If one of them is 10, then the other two together must be 70. And because they're the same size, what we can do to find the value of this bar and the value of this bar, so these bars, remember, will be the same, we can divide 70 by 2. We got 70 because we have 10 but need to make 80, and 80 minus 10 is 70, and we're dividing by 2 because we have two unknown bars of the same size. So that gives us 35. So we know that Liam, we have 35 plus an extra 10, so that's 45, and Amy is just 35. So that means Liam weighs 45 kilograms. On the grid, join dots to make a triangle which does not have a right angle. So remember, a right angle is like the corner of a piece of paper or the corner of this screen. So we could draw a triangle like this, but there are lots of possible solutions for this question. Now what you want to do is to check each angle. So if we look at this angle here, we can see that that's obviously an acute angle. This angle here is an acute angle, because if we have this horizontal line to make a right angle, we would need a vertical line upwards. And we can see that this angle here must be obtuse, because if we keep this horizontal line to make a right angle, we would need a vertical line upwards. But we can see that what we have is larger than that, so that's an obtuse angle. So none of our angles are right angle, so we have joined the dots to make a triangle which does not have a right angle.